In this next video, I'm going to talk about how you can add navigation to what we have so far. And it's going to create a nav header as well as a menu button and its navigational list. This is kind of what it's going to look like. So I just want to show you really quickly as a diagram what things are going to do. So this is how the HTML is going to serve us. The line 12 where it says nav class equals nav closed. Um, we'll discuss the nav closed class later. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there um, so that you can go ahead and include it in your code, uh, but we're not going to deal with it just yet. Um, and then the next line on line 13, you see an A tag, and it has um, an ID of menu, and that's going to be important, and the value that's inside of the A tag is menu. So uh, that whenever somebody is able to click the button, they'll see the word menu on the screen. And the ID of menu is going to be really important for our JavaScript, and it's uh, basically going to become a toggle button. And where it says href equals main nav, uh, we're going to discuss that later. It, right now, it's not going to jump anywhere. Okay, just I want you to realize that that's there for something that we're going to deal with later. And specifically, it's dealing with uh, the the possibility that somebody might not have JavaScript, we're going to do something special with that ID of main nav whenever we jump to it. And then uh, lastly, inside of this uh, entire nav section is a list, an unordered list, starting at line 14. And this is going to be our actual navigation list that starts off hidden, and then it becomes revealed when the menu button above is toggled. So the menu button on line 13, whenever someone presses that, it'll become hidden, and if they press it again, it'll become closed. And So we're going to have to effectively add some JavaScript. But right now, let's go ahead and get this HTML set up. So we're back with our HTML file, and the place where we're going to add this uh, nav is going to be right at the top of the body. So if I go ahead and enter, and I hit paste. And... Um, so we have uh, our code that we were talking about in uh, the slide. So we've got nav, and of course we discussed nav closed. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, and then we have our A tag, which is going to be our toggle menu button. And then we have our entire unordered list. And I've given it an ID of nav list because we might need well, not might, we will need to have an ID on that so that we can target it separately from other unordered lists that might be in the page. So we're going to go ahead and give this an ID of nav list. So if we preview this really quickly, it's not going to look anything at all like what we want. Oh, so let me go ahead and save it. And you get something that looks like this, right? Okay, well, but we want it to look like this. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do some basic styling first off. I'm going to go ahead and open up my style sheet a little bit more, if it'll let me. Okay. And uh, first thing I want you to notice right off the bat is that right now we just have a bunch of rules thrown in together. And I think now is probably about the right time to start putting comments in here because we're going to have so many rules later that it's going to be really important that we know where to go to look for these different things. Um, I'm a strong believer in CSS organization and HTML organization. So let's go ahead and let's do a, a couple of things before we add our navigation rules. So for instance, like let's go after the body and let's make a comment. Oops. Let's make a comment that is something significant. Uh, and maybe it can say something um, like general text rules. And I'm going to put it in all caps. OK. And that'll apply to our H1, H2. We don't have anything else yet, but we can come back later if we're in a like maybe style the anchor links on the page um, or something will come back up there. And then here we have, these are basically section rules. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to copy this. And let's go ahead and put section rules. And then 
this is sort of like a subset of the section rules, this page header. We might have other subset section rules. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put something that's like maybe lowercase that's smaller. And we'll say that this is um, section page header or something like that. So that it's very clear that, that these rules are dealing specifically with the section page header, and I can put the word rules after it. And um, so far, all of those deal with the section page header. So now I think uh, is a good time to go ahead and start our nav. Um, and as, as we keep making new sections, we're going to create these, um, these comments. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to come down right after the general text rules. I'm going to put it before the section rules because nav, if you notice in my HTML over on line 12, it comes immediately after the body tag. So I like to try to keep my CSS kind of in the same linear order as my HTML. So I'm going to put uh, my comment and I'm going to change it from general sec uh, text rules to nav rules. Okay, and if I wanted to be really persnickety, I could add more of these to kind of make it a little bit stand out a little bit more. Um, anyway, and so I'm going to start my nav uh, just by typing nav. Okay. Oops. Okay. And then I'm just uh, going to paste this to keep you from having to watch me type again. Now let's let's talk about some of this. So we have a height. Um, I want the the bar to be that sort of you know dark colored bar at the top. I want it to be about 3m tall. And I played around with the line height, um, and that's something that you, you might need to do too if you're going to adjust something. But I played around with the line height so that the text was the right height inside of that that uh, that 3M tall uh, section, and uh, or I guess nav element. <clears throat> and I'm making the position fixed so that it always stays at the top. That way it doesn't scroll with the page. It basically pulls it out of the document flow and sticks it right up there at the top of the screen and I want it to be top zero, left zero, and I'm gonna give it a Z index of like 600 because I want it to be on top of everything, okay? I want it to be the very topmost layer. And, and 600 is just an arbitrary number, but it's so high that I have plenty of room underneath to play around. Um, and then I'm gonna tell it to be display inline block. And um, that's because I, uh, it's because of the way that I want the the stuff inside of it to cascade, and width is going to be 100%, so it takes up 100% of the, the viewport, or its parent, which is the body, and um, I want the background color to be sort of transparent, but I want it to be dark transparency, so I've got the 000, zero, zero is black, and then the uh, 0 .55, I should say 0 0.55, to make sure that all browsers can render that properly. So 0.0, or excuse me, 0 0.55 is gonna be about 55% opacity, no border, and so forth. Okay, you can read through this. Now, this is sort of curious. Oh, and I also want the text. I want everything inside of it to be centered, and I want everything inside of it to be uppercase. Now, this is kind of a curious thing. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you this right now because it would probably drive you crazy, but, um, if without this, in some browsers, uh, and you might not even experience it if you're not testing on multiple browsers, but it's a problem. On some browsers, um, things in Chrome and Safari, because they use the WebKit um, engine, well, they can, sometimes it can have problems jumping from link to link in internal pages and whenever you're using like a motion. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and nip that in the bud and I'm gonna show you that this is a, an important thing to have. It's dash webkit dash transform and for the property name and for the, for the value of the property, it's the word translate capital Z. Okay, so it's translate Z and the Z is uppercase with two parentheses and a zero inside of it. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my index file and then I'm gonna test it really quickly. And there, so far, it's sort of shaping up the way I would expect it to. I've got my, my nav bar up here, so if you wanted to just double check, you could inspect it. So that's my nav bar, and then there's the menu uh, link, and then down here is all of this 
list below. Okay, so so far it's it's doing what I expected it to do. So now we need to um, deal with the menu button and we need to deal with the list in terms of styling. So now I want to make some rules for that menu button. So I'm going to paste again and I put a little comment here and uh, first we're going to style a menu. Okay, we want it to float to the right. We don't want it in the center like it was in our um, test just a second ago. And we want to put a border around it as we discussed that makes it more intuitive to as a clickable button. And this is the color that I think the text looks good as. I sort of picked it out of this picture that I ended up using. So if you look at this, um, I sort of picked this uh, sort of a peachy pinky kind of color and you'll be able to see it if you were to look you know, at, at uh, the, the color that it is here, okay? This is what it's going to end up looking like in normal state. So you can see that I sort of picked it from the picture. And um, so we have uh, width. I had to give it a specific width that I wanted it to be um, and so that it was a sort of a button width. And, and it's got some other attributes too that you, you would end up playing around with yourself. And then on hover state, I changed it so that it does something very different and it becomes a very clear, obvious button. And whenever we test it, it ends up looking like the thing I just showed you. So it goes from looking like that to looking like that. It pulls menu up here, this is floating right, and now we have to deal with this list. And what's happening is because this is a float right, it's still trying to pull all these other items up to float next to it. So what we need to do is we need to put a clear on this list. Let's jump back over to our CSS and let's make a, another quick comment. So let's say uh, nav, let's just say nav list. Okay. And we will paste again. And I'm basically saying that the UL whose ID is nav list is going to clear any right floats. And I want it to also have a list style type of none and font weight, even though this this should be taken care of from the reset. I went ahead and I put it in there. You can probably get rid of it, but anyway, and then I tell it I want this font weight of 300. I'm gonna save it, and we're gonna do another test real quick, see how we're faring so far. Ah, and that's better. Okay, yeah, you can still see the list. However, at least it's not doing that wonky thing that it was doing before. Okay, it's clearing and it's dropping it down below this black sort of transparent bar at the top. That's really important because when we hide it, we don't want the home button up in up inside of it like it was there. Okay, so let's jump back over here and there's something that we want to also do with the nav uh, closed. All right, so right now if you look over here, we have a rule for nav. If you look up here, it's just regular old nav. One of the things I want to do is I want to be really specific and not just say that this is true of all of the entire nav, because later we're going to do something with the JavaScript. I want to make a rule that is nav dot nav underscore closed, because that's the way that this is written over here in the HTML on line 12. And I want to tell it to have overflow hidden. So anything that's overflowing outside of that nav closed container is going to end up being hidden. So let's go ahead and save that and let's do a new test. And you see now we don't see it. So that's good, right? It's gone now. Now it's good and it's bad. Now the problem is, see I click, nothing happens and our navigation is forever uh, disappearing. Well, we're gonna use some JavaScript to fix that.